Achalasia cardia Achalasia cardia is a rare disorder and in simple terms means paralysis of the esophagus. Since the esophagus becomes paralysed, it causes difficulty in swallowing food or even liquids as the sphincter becomes constricted. The esophagus is the tube that connects the mouth to the stomach and it has sphincters to allow food to enter the stomach and to prevent its reflux back into the mouth. In achalasia, the nerves of the esophagus is damaged. Achalasia in Greek means failure of relaxation, thus the term achalasia. The exact cause of this disorder is not known though it is speculated to be associated with a variety of factors which can damage the nerves, such as viral infection, genetics, environmental factors, and autoimmunity. Currently, the disease is thought to be a multifactorial disease, in which an autoimmune reaction triggered by any previous infection can cause the disease in genetically predisposed person. Now, a question that arises is to why there would be difficulty in swallowing food or even liquids if the esophagus is paralyzed. It is because normally the esophageal sphincter opens up due to the nerve supplying it, which commands it to open. But since the nerves are paralyzed and the muscles are weakened, the esophagus fails to open, which is why the food as it enters the esophagus causes pain as it passes down into the stomach. Now we already know that difficulty in swallowing food is a major sign and symptom of achalasia cardia. But there are other sign and symptoms which may be present in this disorder, such as refluxing of the gastric juice and food from stomach into the esophagus. This occurs as the sphincter function is lost. The patient will also have cough especially when lying down, which occurs because of the irritation of the throat with the refluxed acid. Chest pain may be present usually depicting heartburn and breathing difficulties occur in case the person inhales the food, liquid or saliva which enters the lungs. Based on the symptoms alone, it is difficult to diagnose achalasia cardia. Thus, the patient will have to undergo the following test. X-ray and barium swallow test. In this test, the doctor gives the patient a barium sulfate solution to swallow. The barium sulfate coats the esophagus. The doctor then takes the x-ray on which the coated esophagus can be seen clearly and a diagnosis is made. Esophageal manometry is another test used to diagnose this condition. In this test, a tube will be passed through the nose via the esophagus into the stomach. The patient is told to swallow and during swallowing, the esophagus must contract. The manometer shows if the contraction of the esophageal muscles are normal and helps determine the pressure within the esophagus. Endoscopy involves using a camera placed at the end of a tube which is passed through the esophagus. The video images of the esophagus is projected directly onto a monitor. Let us now discuss the treatment options available for achalasia cardia. Since the nerves degenerate in this disorder, there is no curative solution for this disease. But the symptoms of achalasia cardia can be reduced to improve the quality of life of the person. Now medications alone may work for patients at earlier stages of diagnosis. The physician usually starts the patient on calcium channel blockers and nitrates, which opens up the constricted esophagus. But after prolonged use, the medication stops working for the patient and the patient needs to undergo surgical treatment for managing the disorder. Many surgical options are available for achalasia cardia though each have their own advantages and disadvantages.
there are also endoscopic options which may help in managing the symptoms pneumatic dilatation is a common option used at an earlier stage of the disease and in cases where surgery may not be an appropriate option in this the physician specialized in endoscopy passes a tube with a deflated balloon through the mouth and into the stomach the balloon is then centered over the lower esophageal sphincter and then air is pushed into the balloon to inflate it due to the inflation of the balloon the constricted sphincter opens up and remains open for a long period of time thus treating the difficulty in swallowing the balloon after inflation is again deflated and the tube is then removed intraspinctric injection of botulinum toxin is another endoscopic procedure done in patients who cannot undergo surgery in this procedure a botulinum toxin injection is given into the esophageal sphincter which blocks the release of a substance called as the acetylcholine which thus helps in balancing the contraction and relaxation of the esophagus even though it is a simple procedure its effectiveness is only in few patient and most patient requires repeated injections for relieving the difficulty in swallowing also this procedure can also cause inflammation at the esophageal sphincter which makes myotomy another effective surgery difficult to conduct in this patients myotomy is a surgical procedure in which a muscle is cut so the esophageal sphincter muscle is cut to allow passage of food and liquid through it though it have a high rate of success the patient can develop gastroesophageal reflux disease in which the gastric juices from stomach enters back into the esophagus per oral endoscopy myotomy also called as the poem surgery is a surgical procedure similar to myotomy except in this the surgeon passes an electrical scalpel through the endoscope the surgeon using this scalpel then cuts the sphincter muscle to make a way for the entry of food and liquid in this procedure there will be no cuts or incision on the outside of the patient for more such information kindly like and subscribe the channel